And that was before they make us run. You're listening to Willow Willis on Fab Radio International. And I'm hoping I've got James on the line. James, can you hear me? Hello, yes. Oh, I've How got you. <laughs> yes, I got there in the end. How are you? I'm fantastic. Lovely to be with you this evening. How That's are you? good. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. I've, I, now this is going to cut down on our time a little bit, but I want to dive right in. Um, look, I just wanted to introduce you. You're a motivational coach and speaker, and you went from being uh, uh, from headlocks to hugs. Uh, but you still embrace people just uh, in a more positive way. Um, and you're a motivational speaker, mentor, author, personal trainer, and life and business coach, but it always wasn't like this. And you're a former unbeaten bare-knuckle fighter, unlicensed boxer, martial artist, and bouncer, and your life was soaked in blood, violence, anger, hate, and negativity. And it's been a long journey. However, today you're known as Mr. Happy and the leopard who changed his spots. And uh, your aim in life is to spread miles and miles of smiles around the world with your work and being yourself. Um, h- how is it all going for you at the moment? Oh, wonderful. Thank you for that. It's very well read out. Into you're that. welcome. <laughs> uh, oh, a very, very positive. And it's been a p- particularly positive start to yeah. this new year indeed. Because it's, uh, we live in a world, I often say, you know, of, of duality. Yeah. And as, we, as you know, that's sort of like the light and the dark, yeah. the soft and the hard, all yeah. of the, the yin and the yang, if you like. Yeah. So the darker it does get in places, I've noticed that people are searching for more joy, for more peace, for more stability in their lives. Yeah. So actually, yes, it does keep me rather busy, which is a joy. Absolutely. Well, that's always a good thing. You must find now that, that now you're getting more questions from people people who are searching for something a bit deeper. Um, We're looking for something a little bit more than our day-to-day humdrum lives, and it's not easily fulfilled, at least not in the mainstream sort of a way. No, well well said. Absolutely. That that is actually one of the things uh, I do actually actively promote, particularly I call it a diet. And now diet, we often uh, somewhat wrongly um, assume that that's all to do with the food. Mm. But if I just may use my own example, as I always do, Growing up, I fed myself a constant diet Mm. of negativity. So I watched violent films. I listened to negative music. I watched the news, very negative slant. Mm. Lo and behold, in my thoughts, words and actions, negativity poured out. So what's encouraging, though, if we can refocus, reframe our attention and focus on the positives, which are there, then, as I say, so clients come along, one of the first things I say, switch off most, unless you're a journalist Mm. and it pays to keep (laughs) up to date with the news, stop watching the negative news. It's one-sided and it's enormously biased. Absolutely. And just doing that, Willow, for a week, the transformation I've seen in individuals' lives is quite profound. So that, that in itself can be quite quite powerful. Just just having a fast, at least for a bit, from the daily yeah. negativity we're bombarded with. I think that's so important. I mean, I, I personally haven't watched television now. I think the last time I watched telly was 2011. Well done. And uh, the last time I had a uh, diet soda or fizzy drink was 2009. Fantastic. Outstanding. Thank I really, you. I respect that. But, I mean, the, the proof's in the pudding. How do you feel compared to before? Mentally, I feel a lot better. Yeah. Uh, physically, I've got a bit of a way to go, but that's all right. We get there, you know. We're, it's all going in the right direction, and I think sometimes you need to rewire your brain yes. before you can really start to be physically that person that you, can tru- that you truly are, you know, the person that you imagine yourself to be and always have imagined yourself to be ever since you were a little kid, yes. your perfect self. Oh, and well uh, said, but we're I, on I our really way. do believe it's quite powerful, actually. It can be summed up in one sentence, thoughts become things. And I've truly seen that, that, that how powerful that is. You know, mm. if you dwell on anything for long enough, you begin to get that feeling. So lo and behold, yeah. when again speaking in my own life, mm. when I focused in my head first and foremost on depressive, on angry, mm. on violent, on negative thoughts, it had to. It was almost the law. It mm. had to manifest, it, manifest itself physically in my behavior. Again, what's exciting about that, when you understand that you are the controller of your thoughts, mm. then you can begin to swap the, the so-called unhelpful as opposed to negative ones, mm. focus on the good, lo and behold, your behavior will catch up. Well, this is interesting, isn't it? And, and now we're understanding, see, this is, I have this, um, 
Um, I love your philosophy on life. I, I spent today and yesterday watching a whole heap of your videos Thank you. and your, vid and your uh, interviews online, and there's some fascinating information in there, uh, just information like you were born seven and a half weeks premature. You, I think you grew up in southeast London, is that right? That's correct, yeah. Born um, in Lewis and raised in Catford. Quite a busy urban environment. Lots of... Um, again, uh, it, that was my reality. Mm. My, my peer group was very... Very the old paradigm, very, mm. very macho, very you handle problems with your fists, yeah. real men don't cry, yeah. all of that which we now know, thank goodness, Doesn't work. nonsense, yeah. but that was my reality. Yeah, and, 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 through, and see, this is the thing, I find that positive role models for men, especially men, is so hard to come across these days. Oh, you well know, said, especially it's someone. Enough. I'm doing what I can, but my goodness, as you say, it, it, it is. It's um, it's a lack. But again, as always, I just focus on doing what I can. Mm. That they are out there. They just need to be brave. Because mm. I always say, it's like people with a good mission, with good intention. So many of these good souls, they're too timid. They're timid, yeah. and yet people that are promoting overt violence, mm -hmm. pornography, and whatever guns, they're the ones that are almost unashamedly out. Yeah, there. unashamedly. So it really needs to be reversed. Willow, and I say, you know, stand up, particularly all the poets, all the people that have got in mm. radio or in the written word, mm. you know, let's get it out there. Mm. Well, they say the empty vessels make the loudest noise. Indeed. And they do. And then, but then that said, the squeaky wheel gets the oil, so if we pipe up loud enough, uh, we might just find we turn this boat around. Oh, well, uh, 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 no doubt. I mean, the, the sea changes happen. Mm. And, and moreover, what I've come to, to, to recognise, that this is quite a deep point, uh, we won't go into it too much, but it's, uh, even on a superficial level, if we live in a world of duality, which we do, mm. now, listen to this, because I found it interesting that I actually have come to think we actually need a certain, call it darkness, call it negativity, to, in order to actually fully appreciate the light. Yeah. I can only talk for myself, but if I did not have a very abrasive, very unpleasant background yeah. how would i know where, where how, as i am now living in yeah. paradise i know i totally agree this, i say this sometimes when I, I say if god just told everyone how it works and how it's meant to be how is god going to find out who's naughty and who's nice well ex exactly exactly and therefore do the job that needs to be done and 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 reveal what needs to be revealed this is a learning process as with the individual as with everyday people when they're learning to overcome their uh, whatever their personal setbacks are i know james you've had yours i've had mine cool. and uh, so many people out there uh, have had their personal setbacks i live uh, next to a lady who's a hopeless alcoholic but the thing is and i was going to say this that sensitive people are often really smart and they're the ones that fall by the wayside and that our society, actually the best that our society has to offer are your homeless and disenfranchised because they can't get by in a society that's built on one-upmanship, competition and ruthlessness and that's the best that we have and we're letting them rot by the roadside. But they also do it to themselves. Well, exactly. I mean, with respect, I, I understand that the actual point you make about sensitivity, mm. I understand that all too well mm. because I, I, I am myself and yet I covered it for the longest time. Yes. Moreover, though, about personal empowerment, nay, responsibility, and, and I say this with great love for all of my homeless brothers and sisters, the point is, though, that you have to function in the world as mm. we find it. And so it's all well and be, be me being sensitive, but unless you can, it's no good unless you can make an impact. Mm -hmm. So, uh, uh, yeah, I, I, again, it's about tempering both. You know, you were given the, both the feelings for a reason. So I, I, I can only talk for myself, but yes, I feel the world all too keenly, but I see that as a marvellous gift, yeah. and I work with the set of cards I've got. Mm -hmm. And moreover, I think you need the balance. It's, we can't say one is better than the other. It is what it is, and it's up to us to, to inspire that yes. in, in others. And, and at least open the dialogue of an alternative way. Absolutely. And the old ways are old and stale, and these old, I often say these old guys that are running the world right now, they represent the old ways. Oh, they, cool. It doesn't yeah. work anymore. We're not doing that anymore. And yet they're so set in their ways. <laughs> but unfortunately, they've got access to the biggest weapons in the world and because of the history and the careers that they've had. But that said, we can change the world with the power of our thoughts, as you said. And, um, uh, and look, everything around us, the world, uh, the cities we live in, architecture, it all existed inside someone's mind. Exactly. And but then I mean, it went on paper and then it happened in the world. 
well said, but even more important, I just like that there's a slight caveat to what you said. Mm. You said they have access to the greatest weapons yes. in the world. I, I don't believe that. I believe we have, and that's our own reigning, becoming self-sovereign over our minds and actually letting love spill out yeah. into that is the greatest. And it's not just because I say so. There's already been a blueprint, a template for this. Mahatma Gandhi himself, bless mm. him, he brought the British Empire to its very I know, yes. How? Through Please non violent confrontation. Yes. There's a blueprint for it. It mm. can be done. And even yeah. more so, what they're now finding, the wonderful studies into mindfulness, mindfulness and meditation, they have actually done this in America, where a group of people have gathered to think peaceful thoughts. Mm. The crime rate has Dropped. statistically yes. and been record, recordable, verified, mm. actually gone down. Yeah, this is interesting. And and when I said they have access to these big weapons, and this is intimidation, it's just a hoax, you yeah. see. This is the big hoax. Hey, you guys, you better be careful because we got our finger on the big red button and we can blow this place any time. And it's the big hoax that actually we think they have the power when we have the power. That's it's right. us. Well, well said. And, and that's the oldest trick in the, in yes. the book. It's that we feel we're a jail. Uh, sorry, we are, we are being imprisoned, and yet we are our own jailers. The cage is open and always has been. But you ha always has been, sorry. Yeah. But you must free yourself. Yeah. It's an inside job. And Absolutely. again, it goes full circle, lovely, what we, we, we alluded to earlier, whereas if you are sort of like with your own fitness, if you just do the, the external, as great as that is, mm. if there hasn't been a profound seed change, it's very much like a Band-Aid over a tumour. Mm. Mm. Now, look, I was going to ask you, um, now we sort of as a society, we routinely relate to money as success, but uh, I think money is a trick. Um, the people who strive to get more money, they never seem to have enough. It's like an emotional black hole and they fall in and they can't get out. Would you agree that giving to others is one of the first keys and the first steps in realising personal success? Oh, this is an enormous subject. It, yeah. uh, people have, it's the most typical misunderstood thing even amongst the world's foremost economists. Yes. First and foremost on that point, though, Bob Marley said it better than I. He said, look, if your goal, if your happiness is based on numbers, mm -hmm. uh, money, money is numbers, and numbers never end. So if you're chasing that, that's a fool's errand, because the numbers never end, y your happiness is out of your hands. Now, if you overstand that money in and of itself is an illusion that you alluded to, but moreover, I mean, before, in times gone past, we traded in the cattle of the day, mm. the herd, uh, in, in, uh, in, in the Far East, it would have been camels, whatever the, the local whatever commodity the currency, was. Yeah. It, it's just, a, a, if people understand, this is the thing, about, it's a value exchange. Yeah. You see, I now see that what you do, when you give to the world with good intention, intention your services, it's quite right, quite right that you are fairly recompensated. Yes. Now, under the current uh, paradigm, rightly or wrongly, that's money. But when you overstand, I see it as just love tokens. Mm. So when I, when I listen to your radio or somebody gets um, enjoyment from it, yeah, I watch a nice film. I will gladly pay to see that because they've made me happy. They've yeah. raised my vibrational level. Mm. So when you overstand, it's just a, a medium exchange, a value mm. exchange. Mm. You've got to get off of this obsession with money. Mm. But as you say, in and of itself, focusing on just the paper, the, the digits in our bank, mm. yeah, that is a complete um, illusion. Yes, and I think that money, uh, t I call them money talismans because a talisman has no power unless you invest, unless you put power on it like a, um, a stick or a rock or anything like that and, and shamans throughout history have done this like they point the bone at someone and that person would just sit down and die because they'd give up because the bone had been pointed at them. Money is a talisman it has no power, it has the power that we invest in it. Exactly, exactly but I think that's so important once you, un uh, once you understand that you can then, but take the power back, stop just complaining about yeah. it. You can then use it prudently. You can actually vote with mm. your fiscal mm. uh, bank balance. You can choose where to spend your money in, in, the, in the support in small independent businesses or mm. large conglomerates. Do you just buy more processed rubbish or do you buy organic? It's mm. all a choice. Mm. And you, we can offload that. But again, I'm so much about personal empowerment. Mm. We, we literally vote with our money. Mm. So we mustn't shy away from it again because it's resisting what is. And under this current system, currently we're using money like it or not. Mm. So we can either sit, but you see, if, 
it, you're not being proactive if we just sit, you know, like our homeless friends and we opt out. Mm. No, you've got to do it from the inside. Mm. And, you know, me becoming poor, <laughs> how can I help the poor by being one of them? Yes, that's <laughs> it, true. How so can a drowning man We've save another drowning man? Um, look, I wanted to say to you also, um, I think there's two sides to humans, the animal and the intellectual, and this is a battle that you've personally gone through, the animal inside versus the intellectual, you know, the, the thug versus the sensitive one. Um, and this is the inter eternal internal battle of good and evil. The animal in us wants to fight all the time, and for young men it might be with their fists, or for families it might be fighting to make ends meet and the struggle for the basics. But all of us have our internal voice of reason, and I think most people are living in a state of flux somewhere between these two paradigms, and that we're constantly talking ourselves in and out of things and never making definite plans and sticking to them while we're distracted by the little things in our lives, and life passes passes us by. Yes, no, well said. There's, there's two key points I'd like to pick up on. The first one is you're right about, there was a wonderful story I heard, and it was like an ancient um, Red Indian, and he was talking to his, um, you know, young son, mm. and it was about, he said, you know, there were two sort of like wolves mm. in life, you know, one, one good and one bad, they both live inside you. And the little boy asked his grandfather, well, well which one wins? And he said, the one you feed, yes. mom. And it's the one you feel, you talk about the intellectual side or your animalistic nature, mm -hmm. the lower, the lower senses. It's the one you feed, my. How do you feed it? Again, I alluded to earlier, the diet, the steady diet. Mm -hmm. You feel yourself through, through things you watch and read and listen to. That where your attention goes, your attraction and energy flows. Mm -hmm. It's very, very important. And then on the other point, you, you talk about people just... Drifting, mm -hmm. I think drifting is a huge mm -hmm. malaise, mm -hmm. and it's very dangerous because if you just drift, as you say, not just your life, which is your, you know, the sands of your time, where your very yeah. life drifts by, but you need to have a definite purpose, and it's helped me tremendously when you fix on something, and yes, be flexible on how it gets done, mm -hmm. but I see a lot of drifting, and this is across across the age groups, and it can actually be tremendously dangerous, mm -hmm. drifting through life with no fixed oh, goal yeah. or purpose. Yeah. Yeah. And then it's gone. Um, also, um, one of the, th the biggest blocks, I think, for people is being authentic. And it's a fear of judgment as we discover who we really are and the blunders and the mistakes that we make in discovering who we really are. It's essentially done in front of our families and friends. And you don't just say, hey, that's it. I know who I am. It's done. It's a process in stripping away the falseness, the fear and the hatred in our lives. And we wind up doing things that confront ourselves and others. And the reason why people shy away from being their authentic selves is because it's hard work. But when you finish the hard job, it only adds to the sense of personal pride and it's not false pride but it's it's self-love and appreciation it never ends and that's okay and it's okay to make mistakes and if other people disagree with us that's okay to it too it's okay to achieve your dreams without feeling bad about it yes yeah oh i did i did a motivation on a, a video on that the power of you because all of your power is hidden or stored currently hitherto under your most authentic <laughs> self yes the second you can be dare to be you dare to raise your voice above the trembling crowd and put your head above the parapets, mm -hmm. as you say, and face, yes, other people's opinions and not see it as wrong or better. Yes. Just it's all part of the wonderful tapestry and mosaic mm -hmm. of life. It just doesn't get any better than that. You know, as I say, put the you in unique because mm -hmm. you were born, you know, don't die a copy when you were born in original. Mm -hmm. It is the greatest service you could do to yourself and mankind. Be yourself. Yeah. Look, we've only got a couple of minutes left because I'm a bit of a technophobe, so I, I couldn't figure out the buttons, and that's why no, I took a little fine. bit longer to get to you. Again. But I actually wanted to ask you, look, if, if you wanted to um, come on every now and then and we could ha have a bigger conversation and keep this narrative going be because honest. it's huge it. and it's I mean, so important. It's certainly, you know, if it, can, if it can help one person out there, wonderful. And the, the more voices that are, you know, helping inspire hope, positivity yeah. and love, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm there. I'm it's there. a short introduction, but just before we go, I wanted to say to you, as you well know, that tactics used by others to manipulate us often take the form of non-verbal or non-physical control techniques. And being a former bare-knuckle boxer, unbeaten as well, and, and multi, and uh, what is it, a martial artist, or uh, what is it when you have multiple different disciplinaries? Oh, yes, it was like, well, it's about what, multi-skill, but I mean, yeah. there's lots of areas, you know, as a as a mixed martial artist and, and so on and, and the boxing so yeah multidisciplinary right. in terms of um, skill set yeah what I was going to say is but you would know along your years and, and, and your journey that a lot of 
violence and a lot of control takes place non-verbally and non-physically. Yeah. And 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 uh, how do we protect ourselves from hurt and confusion caused by non-physical violence, like a big punch in the guts when we hear that someone said something really mean about us? Well, again, you always you have to understand it's never about you; it's about mm. them. So when pro- someone projects some uh, distasteful thoughts at you yeah. or, or actual overt speech you know yeah. i hate you yeah. you're ugly overstand that it's their projection yeah. so in a way they're talking about themselves now th- and that's the important thing you know you forgive we we, we um we forgive the, beha- the, the the person behind it is always of value and significant we must but we, we may we may we may find the behavior distasteful mm-hmm. and i think that's so important just quickly i know we're coming to an end because i that was the problem with i it, mm-hmm. you know, it's the big eye we live in the world of iphones ipads mm-hmm. it's Forget that. It should be about more the we, the yes. us, the collective. Group. Because when it's all self-centred, it was all about me before. And every glance, it, I, I've lost count of the road rage incidents mm. I got involved with because I, the, the, the big I, felt uh, uh, disrespected, particularly amongst because somebody had a mean or uncourteous glance towards me. Yeah. It had nothing to do with me. Yeah. Moreover, I did not know what the person had gone through. But you see, if you go through life like that, always at the beck and call of others' spitefulness, you, again, because it's, yeah. it's drifting, you haven't got a firm understanding of your unique yeah. brilliance. Yeah. You, because when you know that you are deserving of love, you, you will just do it. you yeah. will forget all of this. James, because, I, but it's, again, it's definite, a definiteness of purpose and realise that you're a being of love. And yeah. yes, some people have forgotten that, but it's not we're, about we're you. It's not about you personally. Yeah. We're right on the hour, James. I'm going to have to wind it up. We've got the news coming up. I so thank you for coming on the show. Um, what's your website? Oh, yes, look, my website is jameslambertcoaching.co.uk. All right. People can get a free book when they're there, Unstoppable, which refers to the unstoppable power inside all of us, I believe we've all got. jameslambertcoaching.co.uk. Fantastic, James. We're heading on to the news now. Thank you so much, and I'll be back to you, and we'll get you on the show again. Having failed, uh, or, or as the UN are putting it, come to a pause. A British media outlet is reporting that a UN panel will rule WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange has been arbitrarily detained after he took refuge in the Ecuadorian embassy in London three and a half years ago. The BBC is reporting the UN's working group on arbitrary detention has agreed with Mr Assange. However, the ruling will not be legally binding for the UK or Sweden. And British police say Mr Assange will be arrested if he leaves the embassy, as he is wanted in Sweden to face a charge of rape. Mr Assange, who denies the claim, insists the charge is politically motivated. Reporter Charlotte Wright is outside the Ecuadorian embassy.